Hi, I'm Allison Rapp. Welcome to Back and Forth, where we take a look back at a classic artist and forward to someone that I think might be a contemporary counterpart. Mitchell is unquestionably one of my biggest personal inspirations. If I'm not mistaken, she's one of the few people that Bob Dylan felt came close to rivaling him, both lyrically and musically. Her roots are remarkably humble. She came from a small town in rural Canada. She had polio as a child. She had a baby at a very young age. But music was always an integral part of her life. She found herself married to an American-born folk singer named Chuck Mitchell, and the pair would play small venues as a duo. But it didn't take very long before Joni realized that that setup wouldn't last for too long. She started cutting her own music and was writing absolute classics like Circle Game and Both Sides Now in her early 20s. She experimented with so many different kinds of music, even jazz, and she worked with Herbie Hancock for a few years. But without a doubt, her greatest piece of work is definitely her 1971 album, Blue, much of which was written in the midst of her breakup with fellow singer-songwriter Graham Nash. Blue is a heartbreaking record. It's deeply raw and deeply emotional. It's almost as though Joni is showing us who she is from the inside out. It's honest and complicated, and it definitely proves that Joni was always meant to be her own star and not anyone else's. It also reminds us that Joni's true loyalty lies within the music itself and not the charts or the expectations of the studio producers. In fact, these days, Joni doesn't actually do too much musical work at all. She paints instead, and she feels that the music industry has moved too far away from the interests of the artists and their work and more towards the profits and the money that can be made. But an exception to this might be the person who's Joni's contemporary, or at least a version of it. Brandi Carlisle. A singer-songwriter from Seattle, Washington, Brandi started out as a hometown girl, playing local gigs with her band. But she consistently put out good record after good record, including a few of her most popular, The Story in 2007 and Bear Creek in 2012. It wasn't until only recently that Brandi Carlisle started getting some more of the recognition that she deserved, earning a Grammy in 2019 for her album By The Way, I Forgive You, and joining the nationally acclaimed all-female country supergroup, The High Women. I can still hear She produced Tanya Tucker, sang with Dolly Parton and Sheryl Crow, and sold out Madison Square Garden. But like Joni, Brandy has always been dedicated to the music itself, and not to the fame that comes along with it. Her music is also down to earth, and most of the focus is on her stunning vocals. Brandy's vocal range mirrors Joni's, and last year she performed an intimate concert in California in which she covered the entirety of Blue. Joni was in attendance and seemed pleased with the show. Perhaps Brandy is proving that female folk is still alive and kicking. When I think about their intellect and their independence, I hope you can agree that when it comes to Joni Mitchell and Brandi Carlisle, we can see both sides now. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, share across your social media, or comment below. But be nice. Thank you.